Hello and welcome YouTube and Chrome Dawn community to yet another of my build highlight videos. This time we're gonna talk about a piercing, damage, spammable Ages of Men here build. So there is a new conduit since patch 1.1.9.4 out. This highlight video is, has been made on the 1.1.9.6 testing patch, which will be like out of testing soon as well. And this conduit converts well, all the physical and fire damage of Ages of Men here to Pierce reduces the damage by quite a bit, but makes it spammable, so the overall DPS is still pretty decent. Single target, maybe not the best build ever. I definitely <laughs> had some like slower kill times on this build compared to other like better single target builds. But AoE is really nice and the build is a ton of fun to play. Like being able to spam that like Ages of Men here feels really really nice. And uh, I mean if you get used to the bonk sound all the time. It is uh, very, very cool to play for sure. So even though this is such a like unusual build, you don't have to have any mod, right? You don't have to like um, play any league season mod or anything like that. This is not a league exclusive build at all. This is a vanilla build. This conduit has been made by Crate, so you can just play this also on Xbox. Um, well, once you at least have crafted the right prefix on this conduit, right? That is going to be the most challenging thing here. Now the build has defeated everything in the main campaign easily, including like all the dungeons like Morganath and so on and also has done Shadow Realm 65 to 66. It's rather comfortable for farming 65 to 66 in hardcore and if you expect this like a little bit more aggressively maybe for softcore, you should also be able to farm 75 to 76 rather comfortably. On hardcore farming it with this version on 75 to 76, I mean I wouldn't say it's that amazing. I feel like the build is probably rather a crucible build because of the massive AoE it provides, um, the single target is not that great, which does show in the boss rooms in Shadow Ram as well. On top of that, you also can, of course, kill Lokar with this character, that's no problem at all, and you can also defeat Ravager. I did defeat Ravager in around about 7 minutes, not the best kill time, definitely. Uh, I did struggle with a little bit of away. If you are also struggling with away, then you want to get the Elixir of Drangul and the Elixir of Ancients active, at least during the entire fight, um, on top of maybe some other like uh, consumables as well to make the fight a little bit more uh, like easier and also to make your away bearable because you need at least like 3.1k ish away to be able to crit ravager and to proc your assassin's mark because otherwise the build doesn't work all right so let's check out the skills of this build this is obviously an ages of men here build so ages of men here is fully maxed out right 26 out of 16 points here for ages of men here 18 out of 12 points for Avenging Shield, this will give you up to 5 additional targets and 39% crit damage as well as, well, an additional like 0.7 meter radius on the hits themselves. Then we don't need like any points to reprise it really, uh, we just take 1 point to get like 17% skill energy cost reduction. Even that we probably don't even need, um, the chance to reset doesn't work because we already have like 0 cooldown anyway, so this will, um, yeah, this is kind of useless. We have Safeguard maxed out. It is maxed out because we are using a shield, right? We do get flat physical damage here, which will be added to the shield, and well, it will be converted to Pierce because of the con uh, like the conversion on the amulet, right? Also, this has now percent all damage, which means not only physical and fire damage, but also, for example, Pierce damage, right? So you actually get 90% Pierce damage here as well, as well as a little bit of armor. Um, then we also have Virus Smite for movement, of course, right? one point here and one point into Tectonic Shift to reduce the cooldown and also to increase the range of the Virus Smite itself. Then we got the like kind of classic 12 points in Presence of Virtue and 10 points in Haven for like OA as well as the percent HP. You could also put more points to Presence of Virtue, I think, honestly, because you do need lots of OA on a Pierce build. Just like physical builds, they need lots of OA. One point to Resilience, one point to Ascension and one point to Clarity of Purpose. On this build, you already are very tanky because of all the armor, as well as the Fizzeras, and then the like um, seal, the Inquisitor seal, right, on which you're basically going to stand all the time. So the Ascension is not quite as important. I mean, you could also cap this out if you want to become even tankier, and also if you want a like a little bit better temporarily, uh, like temporary damage boost because of the all damage, which is also pure damage. Um, so like you could consider like putting more points here, right? Or putting more points in presence of virtue. Clarity of purpose. If you don't have like full up time on ascension or like any CDR to ascension, then uh, yeah, you always like just one point that's for the away and like the CC rest while you have this up. But it's not really like worth investing more than one point here. And that's already kind of it. We also have 13 points in rebuke, of course, right? Because uh, this is flat physical damage and all the flat physical damage that is globally added to your shield, which in the case of rebuke 
is the case, uh, will be converted to pierce damage. So yeah, you want like this max and this maxed because that is your like source of flat physical which gets converted to pierce on your shield. Let's look at the Inquisitor tree, right? We have 20 out of 10 points in ranged expertise. We are using a gun, technically. I mean, we don't actually like ever use it, but we have it equipped. And this means that the ranged expertise passive is available to us, which gives us percent pierce damage and flat pierce damage. The attack speed does not matter. Ages of men here, scales of casting speed. However, this like flat pierce damage is again being applied to your gun as well as your shield, so it will be added to Ages of Men here. Now we also have, of course, Word of Pain, right? One point here. One point in Word of Agony. I do see some people like put more points in Word of Agony sometimes to get like that uh, chance of impaired aim and radius higher. I personally think that's usually not really necessary, but you can put more points here if you feel like that is necessary for your build. 18 out of 12 points to death sentence, right? As much as we can, uh, like as many points as we can into this ability to get as much pierce resistance reduction as we can get, since Oathkeeper doesn't provide us any at all. Um, Word of Renewal, 13 of 12 is a pretty nice like sweet spot for the like health restored, the um, movement speed um, that you gain as well, and also you get some decent DA as well, which the build like badly lacks, right? So 13 out of 12 points at least is what you want to get in Word of Renewal here, and then 9 points in Vigor for flat health as well as like percent um, like CC resistances, right? Health is really good on my version of this build, if you're playing like a more aggressive squishier version it's not quite as good. Um, however, CC resistances are, yeah, mediocre, so you want at least 9 points in Vigor to, like, soft cap, like, to get that, like, sweet soft cap when it comes to those CC resistances, right? Then we also have hard cap C resolve. This is there for Aether Rest, Chaos Rest, and also, well, damage to Cathonians and Eldritch. If you're playing Crucible, that's mostly important there. Uh, for some reason, C resolve does not give you any pierce damage, right? It's only physical, elemental, and internal trauma. Maybe that could be changed in the future by crate, we'll see. Um, but also it gives us like flat physical damage, right? And flat physical damage means again that it will be well added to the shield and also converted to pierce damage because of the conduit. Um, four points, or in this case only one point to get four points in deadly aim, right? Four points is also the new, or like it's not really that new anymore, but it is the sweet spot for deadly aim, right? So yeah, if you want to have like even more crit damage, you could put more points here. But I think uh, there are points to be spent elsewhere um, in a better way, like for example, uh, Presence of Virtue, right, um, to get more offensive ability. Inquisitor Seal, you are basically a ranged character that's always standing still, so um, <clears throat> the seal is pretty nice because you can just like put it down and then like, well, just hover your mouse over the enemies and then you will like bonk all the enemies like on the screen basically. So you're standing still basically all the time and that like in that case, Inquisitor Seal is really, really great. So hard capped Inquisitor Seal for like absorption, and that's mostly what you use it for anyway, right? Also, one point Arcan Empowerment for like flat pierce damage, percent all damage, percent crit damage. You can also actually max this out, right? To get like more flat pierce damage um, for your Ages of Men here as well. I believe the build does not have really that much uh, like conversion to um, elemental damage. I mean, it does have. Fire to pierce, so the fire part of this elemental damage, like one third of this elemental damage, would also be pure pierce, basically. So yeah, if you want like more damage, you can definitely also like max out the arcane empowerment if you want like more flat damage. That is a possibility. Um, 15 points to Horn of Gander, of course, for damage reduction, 23% like damage reduction debuff in a 10.6 meter radius around you. Really, really good. Uh, takes care of this type of debuff for this build. Uh, super awesome. Um, 18 points or a conviction. This is really like the only reasonable, like logical exclusive to use here on this paladin for pierce damage. Gives you flat pierce damage again, gets added to the shield as well. Uh, flat, um, yeah, the flat piercing damage, percent piercing damage, and 200 away and 16% physical resistance, which actually gives us a overall very decent value of physical, like 57% physical resistance. Um, you can go even tankier, you can go a little bit squishier. 57 might be for most content actually too much. Let's check out the devotions. For devotions, for all pierce damage builds, right, you want to obviously take Assassin's Power Cut. This is mandatory for every single pierce damage build there is in the entire game. Um, so this is mandatory. And since this proc is on crit, well you want good OA, right? That is the main reason why you want good offensive ability on any pierce or physical build. Other than that, we are using um, tip the scales for flat resistance reduction, like and also like some energy leech, 20 flat, 
um, resistance shred here on that one that we have the shifting sounds right the shifting sounds being procced by word of pain in this case um, other car a very nice pierce tier 3 devotion the other good pierce 3 devotion would be unknown soldier however there's literally nothing i can like put this on reliably like you cannot put this on for example inquisitor seal because you cannot proc a pet which living shadow is from another pet which inquisitor seal also is so instead of living shadows i actually went for the assassin which is only in quotation marks at tier 2 um devotion but it's also pretty good actually and if you put it on the seal and the enemy is like standing on top of like in the middle of the seal and this procs the 16 projectiles will actually shotgun right so like the bigger the enemy is uh, the more damage it will deal and that is pretty pretty decent then they also have panther as filler eel as filler right just for affinity like blue and yellow jackal as red affinity filler um harpy as purple affinity filler then the other tier 2 devotions we have are Ulzard, right? Ulzard gives us some pierce, percent pierce damage on the active, flat physical damage here, which again gets converted to, well, pierce damage, right, on the shield for edges of men here. So pretty decent buff as well, also pretty nice armor on this buff. And then we also have the Hydra. Hydra is a ranged exclusive um, devotion, but we are using a gun, so we can, again, make use of the last we get here, the flat physical damage, the all damage, which is well, percent uh, pierce damage as well, of course. So this is really nice. Also, slow rest is pretty nice as well for any build. Uh, the last three nodes I decided to put into Wendigo, right? Wendigo, three nodes gives you... I mean, this first one is obviously useless. Second one is spirit and health. And third one is attack speed, casting speed, and physical resistance. So physical rest and casting speed in one node is really, really, really good for a build like this. So even though the first node is useless, the other two are pretty good. Because this one also allows you to basically not have to spend any points into a spirit. As you can see here, right, attributes, I am I am using 25 points of physique because the shield needs 726 physique. So I'm basically like <clears throat> at the minimum when it comes to physique. And uh, yeah, also literally zero points to spirit because I have barely enough spirit to wear my rings and my amulet here. Um, if you decide to take out some points from the mastery bar down here, right, you can see that I have put like this up to 42 points, I think this is. Um, you can put these points out here and like put them to like Ascension or um, the uh, Arcane Empowerment and so on and so on. Right? If you do that, then you will have to put a couple of points of Spirit, but that's also fine. And also, I guess, a couple more points of Physique. All the other points we're going to put into Cunning, because Cunning is what gives us like offensive ability, and we want offensive ability to be able to crit stuff reliably, right? And you need to crit stuff because of the Assassin's Mark, and if you don't have Assassin's Mark active, that you don't deal any damage. Also on top of that, Cunning of course scales pierce damage, so we get like another 500% pierce damage, which we also do kind of need because the well baseline pierce damage is not going to be that great on this point, right? Where is it actually? Yeah, 1700, that's kind of pathetic honestly, and the side of the seat is like uh, 1800, so we do like need this badly, right? We are, like, have like 2.3k with that up, um, but Ascension is like 1900, like the percent damage is really really bad here on this build. And the main reason for that is actually because of my rolls on my gear. So you can get more damage if you have a slightly different like affixes. Um, also I'm gonna talk about the, the A here real quick, right? You can see that the, the A of this build is absolutely abysmal. Um, but I haven't really found any way to like get decent defensive ability um, while not sacrificing too much damage, right? You need OA way more than you need the A, uh, because otherwise the build just this doesn't have RR and then you don't, like, it doesn't work, right? Um, and, yeah, I, I don't know, like, maybe, maybe some of these items need, like, more defensive ability or something, I don't know. On the other hand, defensive ability is luckily only one of the many defensive, um, like, layers in Grim Dawn. Usually you never want to get crit, right? I usually try to never get, uh, like, build, make builds that never get crit. Um, this one kind of makes up for it by having a ridiculously large HP pool, right? You have 18k HP, you have damage reduction here, 23%, you have the seal, you have ascension. So you should never get one shot, even if you get crit, right? Like, getting crit once or twice is fine with this amount of HP. Finally, let's talk about the gear. So we are using Ravager's Red Gaze. This build overall is going to be very uh, expensive, rather. Um, I mean, it's like a like an expensive me build, honestly. But it's pretty fun. So Ravager's Red Gaze, right? If you kill Ravager, you get his... The red Gaze, this is the one from Ravager of Souls actually, because it does give me like another 4% love steal. You can also use Flash if you want more HP instead, but I mean the build had already like enough HP, so I chose of, <clears throat> of Souls instead for the Life Leech. 
Um, the third one of mines gives you like, what, 3% crit damage or 4? I mean, that's kind of not that amazing, honestly. Coin of Divine Whispers is the core of the build, right? Um, you need to get the specific prefix. So you will have to probably invest at least 100 Ugdom Blooms, maybe like 200, until you get this item, right? Until you get this roll. Uh, the suffix that I got is Pierce Resistance, which, as you can see, is actually kind of helpful. If you get a different one, you will have to adjust your resistances accordingly, right? Um, instead of the Ravager's Threat Case, you can also always, like, use... Um, like a Shadow's Bark Hood, I think it's called, it's like some Pierce Blue item you could use for uh, Pierce damage, or just like a Fettin' Mask, right? Like, you can always use a Fettin' Mask instead as well here. Um, has plus one all skills as well, so you don't lose plus one all skills at least. Um, there are also some other items I think that you can use instead of Ravager's Red Case, but I think Ravager's Red Case is also the best in slot item. Uh, let's talk about other like mandatory items for the Ages of Men here. You need a Ugdenborg repeater. Now you need only a Ugdenborg repeater that has casting speed, right? The prefix, um, ideally you want a rare piercing damage prefix um, because there is no magic one. And also if there was a magic one then it would only add flat damage and flat damage on the gun itself is useless, right? You can see here I have corrosive which looks like it's bad for the build because it converts physical to, um, to acid and adds acid damage. However, I never attack with this gun and also this amulet converts the physical to pierce, like it converts all physical to pierce locally on the skill which means this takes place before any other kind of global conversion like this physical to acid. Um, which means that the physical to acid on this gun doesn't matter. I've looked through all the magic affixes and there's literally not a single one that's useful, right? So all the magic affixes are literally useless. Um, when it comes to suffixes, there's basically just one or two maybe uh, that are useless, uh, that are useful rather, uh, of celerity, giving you casting speed, which you do need. Um, and the other one would be of spines, right? Which would give you like percent pierce damage. Um, but getting off spines on a weapon that has physical damage as a like baseline, like as an implicit, um, is kind of hard because it will have affinity towards physical affixes and not towards pierce affixes. Celerity, however, is a like neutral affix, so um, it has still a decently high chance to get celerity instead of say of spines, right? The ideal weapon is something like I think Heart Seeking of Fury or something like that. Uh, which has like, well, it's like a triple rare basically, with like a rare prefix, rare suffix, um, that both like give you some pierce damage. I obviously don't have that, and probably you don't have it either, but maybe you do, depending like on how much you would like to farm this gun, or how much you are like willing to use GD stash, I guess. But yeah. The, main, main, the other main reason why we use this gun is because of plus 2 to Ages of Men here, of course, and then CR, like Kuna Reduction, 0.5 seconds skill recharge to Ages of Men here, and 35% weapon damage to Ages of Men here. Uh, the chest is actually a faction chest. This is Elite Coven's Combatant's Chest Guard. Why do we use this? Well, it has flat physical, gets converted to pierce, it has percent pierce, it has flat away, it has wit and chaos rest, and then plus 3 to order of conviction, and plus 3 to avenging shield, which are basically plus 6 to... Uh, very nice stats, so this is very very good here. Uh, for shoulders you want Iron Maiden shoulder guards. You can see I don't have any pierce damage on this, so you have potential to get more damage than I do here. I just have like Thunderstruck of the Wolf, Thunderstruck like taking care of my stun rest, at least partially, and of the Wolf giving me like uh, like flat physique and cunning, right? Which does help out as well with damage and tankiness. But yeah, affixes can be uh, definitely better than this. This is like one of the examples that you can get here. Um, the rings are puncturing of celerity. This is actually like the best double magic um, combination that you can get on this vine ring, right? You want the vine ring because it has plus three ages of men here, and it also gives you casting speed of celerity, suffix gives you casting speed, and you get flat pierce on the puncturing prefix. There are rare ones, like rare affixes, that you can get on this that are better, but this is like the best double magic, um, like very easy to render farm the ancient grove uh, combination for this ring. Then we have the Blade Twister Signet. This converts some more like elemental to pierce, but we actually kind of only use it for the Mark of the Blade, right? Mark of the Blade has another 10% resistance reduction um, on enemies to pierce, so you deal more damage if you proc this Mark of the Blade, right? For the gloves, we're using Mythical Quick Throw Gloves. These will reduce the cunning requirement from a ranged weapon, which I don't even know why I'm talking about this because it's useless, because we're stacking cunning anyway. Uh, it does give us percent pierce damage and flat pierce damage, and also a lot of casting speed. And also it adds plus 3 to ranged expertise, which means more percent and flat pierce damage from the Inquisitor tree. 
So we're all basically the best slots, uh, the best gloves here in the slot. Uh, mythical a bit, windshield greaves, percent pierce damage, uh, the ridiculous like dodge proc and fizzeras. So really, really nice. You can craft these as well at Angram. Uh, hopefully you're getting more, uh, like a better crafting uh, completion bonus. I got percent pierce rust, which is like the worst one you can get. Percent physique or percent armor are obviously better. For the belt, I'm using mythical pack of treacherous means. This one converts uh, acid to pierce, which doesn't matter. Has flat pierce, percent pierce, and then like plus four range expertise. And also gives you additional conversion, elemental to pierce, and so on and so on, right? As long as you're using a ranged weapon, which we are, so this is actually amazing. So yeah, well, actually the belt and the ring have tons of LE to pierce, so like maxing out the arcane empowerment is probably worth it if you want more damage, for sure. Talking about the metal, a when you go eye, right? Uh, you want when you go eye because when you go eye has percent pierce damage as a implicit, which means it has a higher chance to roll percent pierce damage affixes. However, I am still just using a thunderstruck of attack, which doesn't like the affixes don't have pierce damage. But thunderstruck does again give me like percent away, actually no flat away, flat away and stun rust out of attack adds even more flat away. So I have 168 away here on this metal, which is I guess kind of carrying the build because otherwise the OA would be a little terrible for a pierce build at least. Also this one adds plus 3 to death sentence, so basically 3 RR on death sentence. And then elemental damage to word of pain and defensive ability shred to word of pain. Overall a very 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 nice like support metal here with this build. For the relic, there isn't really like any pierce relic that fits this uh, old keeper theme that well, so serenity it is, right, you can always use serenity. When it does, we the out, plus one all skills, defensive proc, very nice, especially for hardcore. Now for the pants, uh, mythical mage guard leg arts, you can definitely use different pants. These are very good, but I think there might be a better solution here even. Uh, these have like high fizz rust though, percent pierce, plus two inquisitor seal and plus two arcane empowerment. So overall rather on the defensive side, which also is pretty nice for hardcore. Now the main thing, right, your, your damage is your shield. So what you want here is, well, there's not really a, like a shield that has percent pierce damage, right? But there's this shield which has percent all damage, so it has pierce damage, right? And Watcher of Arudan also gives you plus one all skills to Inquisitor, and also gives you more all damage and fizzrust, especially 18% if you're using a ranged gun, which you are, right? You are using a ranged weapon here. So this is awesome, right? Plus one Inquisitor, plus three to Vigor, tons of health, tons of fizzrust, and well, for shield, also decent pierce, uh, pierce damage, right? So this is basically the, I would say almost like the only or like the only logical choice here for the shield for your basically your damage, right? You're gonna use the weapon damage of this thing together with all the other flat weapon damage to get on both trees from the masteries to deal damage with the ages of men here. All right, we've been talking about this for uh, way too long. The streamer can't make short videos, but I mean you guys know that by now, hopefully. Um, flat augments, I mean augments, right? Flat pierce damage on all the rings and the weapons, of course. And on the gear, you want to fix your resistances and then every thing that's like still left, right? Every other slots that are like all the other slots that are still left that aren't needed for resistances here should be usually solar as a blood binding, which means flat health and flat the A hybrid, right? Um, also seals, right? Seals of blade. Uh, you want to have a seals of blade. A seal of blades rather on your shield because the shield is the one that deals the damage so the life seal of seal of blades is local on the shield and you deal damage with the shield so you lifesteal with the shield right so you want seal of blades on the shield and not on the gun on the gun you for example want seal of might or you can also use one of those like pierce damage adding uh, spikes whatever they're called those are fine as well other component choices should be more or less uh, self-explanatory i think and uh, yeah let's check out the build in action And I guess if I had a good rare Pierce prefix, then I would deal a little bit more damage to Alchemist, right? Yep thing. Yep thing build.
stands quicker than me. Always. Always one step ahead of me. Ding, 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 ding. Bonk, 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 bonk. Bonk, 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 bonk. We're getting our art by the plants, not like us. I know you don't think this tank the volcano, right? Not, not sure about that. Bonk, 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 bonk. That's corruption of Gargaball, just get it, right? Just get it. What do we have here? Zethras? Monk? of Zephyrus. Actually love farming totems, nice. Yeah, totems, it's always fun actually. It's very chill, very fun. Spellbreaker is great for that as well. Like zooming around the map with shadow strikes to hunt down totems. I mean, the pretty tanky, right? Being able to face tank out of those. Uh, that's pretty tanky, yep. Or this guy, right? Long enough, and let's not get hit by the... yeah. <laughs> okay, let's go for Morgan up now. You don't have to worry about shades on this build, right? Because the OE is just gonna, like, kill them instantly. Actually, because of that, this should be a rather comfortable, like, Morganoth killer. Maybe not the quickest. But it's super tanky, right? Um, shades are, like, whatever to this build. But you do deal, like, no damage when you get hit by the projectiles. I got the ring, nice. So for Rokar we have the Jangol already running and let's use the other two royal jellies. I'm not gonna use like all of the jellies here that you can use, but that should be enough to bonk him down, right? Bonk 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 bonk. Against Lokar, I think we can basically like ignore his main ability, right? We're a paladin, right? We have insane flat absorb. Like the only thing that can really like hurt us here is I'm not even sure what. Like the projectiles? They can't really do that, right? They can't really hurt us. I think. I'm not even sure like what we can die to here. We can like die to... Uh, to old age, I guess. Because the kill is not that quick. Pool? Which pool? This pool? That's the age red. Okay, chance to miss. Imperial aim, 36% chance to miss. Where is... Oh, I, I'm getting fumbled, right? Fumble... Yeah, yeah, I'm getting fumbled. Okay, so it is a projectile and it does get reduced by, like, Imperial aim. Yeah, just like any projectile would. Makes sense. Alright, that's gonna be it for this highlight video. Thank you so much everybody for watching. Don't forget to check out the full Ravager fight as well as the full SR65-66 run as well as a Crucible 150-170 Gladiator run that's gonna come out soon as well um, in the description below. Alright, and I hope to see you around on the next one.